Hey there everybody, Decaf here from WiseFlightHeadquarters.com and WiseUpload.com and today we're taking a look at how to extract afterburners from existing models so that we can reverse engineer them or bring them into our own models and credit the original creator. So here we have a headquarter pack F16 which is probably the simplest example I can pull out for you um, and really any model here will work so go ahead and import that and we're going to want to set up our blender window to take advantage of a couple features. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring our cursor down to the interface or the border between the 3D window and the button window and notice where it turns from a mouse cursor to a hand grabbing and we're going to right click and say split area and drag our, our cursor up into the 3D view window click and it makes a new window. And we're going to change this window to an outliner and it shows us all the different empties that are actually in uh, the uppermost level of each parent-child relationship. And we can tell which empties have more children uh, with them is the number of sort of arrows things that we see here. And by clicking on any particular thing here, we can actually go ahead and select it uh, in the 3D window. So that's a very handy thing to have. But if we're looking at all these uh, numbers and some random things down here, we want to figure out what our afterburner is so we can help uh, extract that. So what we're going to do is cycle up through the animations until our afterburner appears and click on it. And notice that our 004 empty has a child object selected. And we know that this is called 004, the afterburner. So it stands to reason that 004 empty would be the parent of object 004. So we need to isolate that from everything else. So we're going to go to the view everything option uh, so we can see the empties and we hit the tilde key to see that and we're going to click on the empty and drag that off to one side. And then we're going to delete everything using the loop select by holding down control and dragging your mouse and we're going to delete all that and that leaves just our empty here and we can bring this back to the origin and now we have an afterburner that we can export as a DNM and import into any other model that we're working on. Additionally, if we just scale this up or move it relative to our origin in edit mode, that's going to work very, very well for us. And it's not going to cause any issues later on down the road. But what if we were trying to do something a little bit more complicated? something like this. So right here we have a lot of things over here on the right side. And as we scroll through, we notice that there's a couple things. We have some nozzles down here, which seem, which I would assume would correlate to these guys, and it does. And then we also, at the very, very top, we have our burners which are over here. And if we move these guys around, we see that it's actually pulling parts of the afterburner away. So that's pretty good. So what we're gonna do here is delete everything except the burners and the nozzles. And before you start saying, oh my goodness, decaf, that's gonna take forever, we're gonna take advantage of the outliner window for some critical things here. First of all, we can select multiple things at once by clicking to the, sorry, the left of the arrows here and dragging down and just by clicking once or twice we can select and deselect different things and in the outliner window we can then right click on them and say deselect or we could say delete and we can go through and delete everything and what it does is it deletes the uppermost uh, portion of that parent child tree that we are actually going into so we can see right here that this has got a ton of children here. So we're going to have to click this a huge number of times in order to get rid of all of the children. And there we go. All done. And now we can go down here and start deleting en masse all of these guys down here. And you don't have to be uh, extremely precise with this. You just want to make sure that you don't go and delete accidentally our nozzles down below. So we're gonna have to pay attention to that. And we're starting to get into the ends, so we're gonna need to 
be paying extra careful attention. There we go, there's the nozzle. And we want to go just up until that point. Oops, got that there, so I deselect it and hit delete. Same problem again. And there we go, got the nozzles, and so now let's get rid of all the panels here. So select all those, delete, delete. And this can take quite a while, as you can see, with a very high detail model. But that's why we're in here. We're trying to extract this very nice afterburner from this model. And here we have everything. We have the portions of the exhaust tube. We have uh, all the exhaust in here, the flames and ex other things. And we have the different nozzles that will appear um, depending on if it's um, at the afterburner is active or is not active. So we can see that happening here. And this is actually uh, a a really nice example of an afterburner. So you'll probably want to go in and take a look at this and try to reverse engineer some things. And in the coming weeks, I'll be posting some videos talking about how we can make our own afterburners that build up to something of this level. So I hope to see you then in those videos and I hope that this extraction technique uh, is very useful for you and will save you a lot of time and frustration um, rather than just trying to futz around and figure things out on your own. You can use this and save a lot of time. So until next time, I hope you have a lot of fun with this and it's very useful. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to find some cool add-ons for YS Flight, head on over to YSUpload.com, the official add-on hosting site for YSHeadquarters.com.